So I've got two uh, comic book super value packs here from Ollie's and these have become one of my favorite things to open just because you know generally what you're going to get by what you see on the outside. And here I have two Fantastic Four covers, really old issues um, from the time when I was a kid. So I'm excited about these alone. And then whatever else is just going to be like bonus. So Fantastic Four, just to give you an idea, um, when I was a kid, Iron Man and Thor... They weren't really the most popular uh, superheroes in Marvel. It was Spider-Man, the Hulk, and Fantastic Four. And um, that, those were really the popular characters. Um, the, all of the Iron Man and everything like that, if you really read about it, that's, that was you know Marvel Studios using the properties they had to the best advantage. While the most lucrative properties at the time were Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and the Hulk. That's it's no coincidence those were also the first movie treatments that were made. And then following behind that would be Captain America. There was some movies of Captain America too. But um, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, um, Doctor Strange, um, they really weren't the most popular characters until just recently. So, as always, I'm going to open these up and um, not show you, not reveal what the issues are. So here's a Dynamite Lone Ranger, and it's in a, it's wrapped up, which is funny because it's not all that old. It's like seven or eight years old, but nonetheless, it's in a comic protector. Um, and I, I want to say this might have been, hey, look at that, that looks very much like, um, <laughs> we're going to be looking at later on in the video. Um, I think this might be before the Johnny Depp movie, and it's taking, starting out in modern times, Moscow Convention Center, San Francisco, temporarily. Temporary home to the Antiques Cavalcade show. Well, this is an interesting beginning. And so they're and they're they're kind of framing the story around that. And the artwork is really, really good. There's the Lone Ranger. You know, the Lone Ranger was pretty popular when I was a little, little kid. I mean, I'm talking early 80s. But it struggled to gain its original 1940s popularity. Um, or 50s. 40s and 50s. It was probably, it probably peaked around then. They made a movie in the early 80s that was really not well received. And then they... They've tried to make different shows and tried really hard. They had a cartoon show when I was a kid. They had a live action show. Um, and then the Johnny Depp movie was just a big failure too. The one that had... I can't even remember the name of the actor who played the Lone Ranger in that one. But um, it just wasn't considered a very good movie. Here's an ash can it looks like. I'm guessing, unless this is more of the story taking place nowadays. Yeah, that's an ash can. And, and dark shadows. So that's, I will say this: the artwork in this is really, really lovely. It's really nice. So the next comic we have is Warriors 
of Plasm by Defiant. Uh, one I've never heard of. Very uh, sort of simple cover. Uh, the back there's a Mortal Kombat ad. I would guess this is somewhere in the 90s or really early 2000s. Let me see. Nineteen ninety three. Wow, kind of you see the fusion between old style and new style comic book art in this, with all the hard work and detail, with hand drawing. You know, not so much airbrush. Um, a little. I don't know what's going on with this. Um. A lot of looking blood and stuff. Um, maybe plasm, plasma. I don't know. Uh, very interesting colors and characters here. Yeah, this is one of the more PG-13 rated comics here. It's got a bit of nudity and um, some kind of perverse themes. And that is that. That's uh, interesting. Kind of an indie, I'm guessing. Next is this is um, Elementals by Comico. Um, a dollar fifty cover price in the U.S. Um, the picture is it's a whole two-page picture which is kind of nice printed on the old newsprint style this is 1987 so dollar fifty was a little on the pricey side maybe um, artwork is kind of cool This might be one I hold on to just out of sheer interest. It is just a bizarre one. Old style. Never seen anything quite like this one in a long time. Justice Machine. See, it's Comico. It's it's trying to be Marvel or DC. But sometimes these are there's some good stories in some of these. Very colorful. Interesting, one of these old indies. Always kind of neat to look at. Next is Captain Gravity, um, 
On the back, we got an after the Victorian, which is an interesting comic. I've shown it quite a few times. I've accumulated quite a few of them from doing these videos. So I'm already a little curious because I like the Victorian. It starts out in 1938 in Mexico, so I love period pieces too. And it's got World War II and intrigue. It's kind of a Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of thing going on, which is already super fascinating. Um, I really do like the art. On this matte finished paper. And there's a kind of a poster of Captain Gravity in sort of red and it fades into this purple color. It's kind of cool. Really good artwork. I like it. And we've got some ads for some other of these comics. Okay. Next is Midnight Tiger by Action Lab. Uh, we got a Star Wars, uh, Scholastic Star Wars book on the back. Uh, this is 2014. Kind of reminds me of Black Panther. Instead of Panther, is a tiger. Oh, nice slick paper. Definitely a Black Panther style hero. With the claws and the mask. Pretty good art, good coloring. Really smooth, silky paper, I really like it. I really do like the paper. Some of the other, I don't know if these are the superheroes in the gang or what. Vamplets. <laughs> Hero cats. Oh, that looks really funny. Sometimes I almost always want to cut this out and frame it. I love that picture. <laughs> Next, we've got lots of Fantastic Four going on with an old issue of The Thing, and I'm pretty excited. Uh, let me get some coffee. Mm. I do like The Thing. This is old, uh, 60 cents from back in the day. This is 1984. When I was a very young child, and I would have wanted this comic. Oh, man. That reminds me of this movie Darby O'Gill and the Little People with the coach, the death um, drives. Uh, all the different Newtons Apple Newtons, Fig Newtons, and they had Strawberry Newtons. And here's a little trivia. You might not know this, but Fig Newtons go way back. They are like um, the old country store cookie. 
I mean, they go back to the 19th century. People got fig newtons. That was a way to eat figs. They were dried and they baked them into these little cookies. Bonkers was pretty popular when I was a kid. I don't even think it exists anymore. Kind of a soft, soft fruit candy. Doc, uh, old Dr. Doom. <laughs> um, these action figures, I had this very action figure. And I wanted, I wanted Cap and Spider-Man. Um, but they came with these shields that, and if you put different pictures in, it would, uh, it was like ventricular or whatever. It looked like it was moving. I used to, oh, I wanted them so bad. Thor. Um. As you can see, the Fantastic Four was really, really big. I mean, this was these were some of the most popular Marvel comics from back in the day. I like how the thing is wearing a singlet. You can see the, the color test or whatever those things are called. Jim Shooter again. We've seen that name a lot. I guess he was, um, became the founder of another comic book company later on. Beauty and the Beast, um, uh, I think this was before the TV show that had Linda Hamilton. And Activision Decathlon, a video game. Iron Man. And we have Montezuma's Revenge, which was uh, a video game for Atari, I think. And that's just sort of funny if you know what Montezuma's Revenge really means, but it's just kind of funny. Um, next, we have a... Ooh, the thing from another world. Oh, wow. Um, this is a dark horse with a hardcover. Um, ads for Indiana Jones comics on the back. Uh, super special issue with... This is obviously the thing from the John Carpenter movie. Um, oh, boy. And it even starts out in the, the snow. But... Maybe some different characters. I don't see Kurt Russell and Wilford Brimley. But I do see some really good pastel looking artwork. Or maybe it is these characters. Maybe this is after the events of the thing. Because it kind of looks like them. See, I love finding things like this in these packs. You never know what you're going to find. And sometimes you find really cool special comics the artwork in this is really really good I don't know if you remember the ending of the thing when they're sitting there and they're not sure which one is infected or not. So maybe this is a follow-up. It is pretty gruesome. There's a lot of blood and gore in this. really impressed at all of the artwork um, this is pretty some gruesome stuff in this comic um, Dark Horse I'm trying to date this here Indiana Jones I'm guessing this is probably 82 no, 91 this is 91 that's a cool one 
Okay, next is Death Vigil number three by um, Stepan Sedgik um, from Top Cow. And more Top Cow comics on the back. Um, this is from 2014. Uh, it's more modern. I'm not a huge fan of this style, but it's not bad either. The artwork is still pretty okay. And creative. And that's, I just like how they did the roses on the dresser. <laughs> it's kind of cool. bad artwork. I'm not sure if I'm going to read this one or not. But it's it's interesting nonetheless. It's just an interesting book to own in my collection. A lot of interesting ones in this haul. Next is Awake by also by Action Lab. Um, New Dimension Comics out on the back. It looks like Two-Face, Spider-Man, Probably a comic book store. Now this has some uh, 2016 style of lesser comic book art. Something that you see, unfortunately, we started seeing a de-evolution de of uh, comic books in the last few years. Now, and you see it in a lot of the artwork. I mean, some of it's not too bad, and maybe this is a style a lot of people like, but... I just feel like, um, I'd like to see, you know, all of the work and art put into the original ones, I think, was made these comics more exciting to look at. It's still neat to look at, but it's not, it's not as thrilling as some of the ones we've already seen in this video. Not only that, incredibly short. But here is Hero Cats again, which I really like. I'd rather just have a bunch of Hero Cats to look at. And finally, we get to this awesome Fantastic Four on the back. Look at that. I remember this very, very ad for Dungeons & Dragons, that starter set. Um, with that artwork on it. And um, they sort of copied it a little bit for the um, Stranger Things. Tor thing versus Torch. So it's a fight between two heroes. The Human Torch and the Thing. 1985 M&M's. The old style packaging that I remember. Paper packages. Super Bubble and Rainbow. Time Machine. I used to have these books. I have a few right now. Uh, they were great Choose Your Own Adventure books. Uh, I had one about dinosaurs I really, really liked. There was also another one where you went back to medieval England. I mean, these were really, really cool and fun. Robotech. Let 
Be the old Wolverine. And they've had a really rough time trying to get the Fantastic Four off the ground lately. The first, the well, not the first, but the movie they made with Jessica Alba back in the, you know, it's been a few years now. That one wasn't so bad. Then they followed it by a Silver Surfer movie, and it, that one I think was pretty bad. And then they tried to reboot it with this new one by Josh Trank, and it was it was just terrible. It was just a terrible movie. Um, <laughs> Eighty-eight cents. You can get. The squirt camera, Hollywood blood capsules, um, the fast muscle cores, an insult book, itch powder. <sighs> Jim Shooter again. And there's Dr. Doom again. House 2, the second story. Ugh. I want to say this was rated R. Who do we have here? We have Captain America, She-Hulk, Wolverine, Doctor Strange, Reed Richards, and Spider-Man. And the Hulk busting out. Alright. Now, let's open the next pack. Away, and we're going to start with the surprises and let's see what we have. We have Green Hornet by Dynamite, rated T for Teen, $3.99 cover price, Vampirella, add on the back, um, uh, this is 2013 good old vintage good old style um, Green Hornet with the old cars and 1930s and 40s which is cool I like the light and flashlight effect I really do like the artwork in this one I have to admit Kato and the Green Hornet They made a movie with Seth Rogen, of all people, to try to re revive this franchise. I don't know what they were thinking. I, they obviously didn't take it very seriously. Um, when I don't, I've never been a big fan of when they try to revive old series properties with this comic twist, like the Twenty One Jump Street movies, or they did um, Baywatch they did ships they did they it's almost like an insult like saying that the stuff that we watched when we were growing up is just stupid now and it deserves to be mocked and I'm not a big fan of that I mean it's just sort of overdone but see this isn't the first time they've done that they did that back in the 80s when they did the Dragnet movie with Dan Aykroyd and they were making fun of Dragnet and but Dragnet was a really serious and sometimes, you know, just incredibly soberly, soberly serious show. Lady Rawhide is back. Stan Lee's How to Draw Superheroes. And some ads for other comics. And there we have it. Next is Soulfire Shadow Shadow Magic. This is put out by Aspen. On the back, there's um, more Aspen comics. The 
let's see. Uh, kind of watercolor style drawing. Not bad. The artwork is not bad at all. It's storybook like. It's very interesting. I like the little, and even the uh, word box is sort of interesting in black with like sort of pink lettering. Kind of reminds me of a storybook. Good, good color. Uh, I love the white dragon. The, all of these dragons are really cool. I would have loved this when I was a kid. Yeah, this is the sort of commitment to art that I really appreciate in comics. You know, just really, really, really good artwork. I mean, I think when you could cut it, cut it out and frame it and like it, that's when the art's good. Very interesting, very creative looking. The Michael Turner tribute issue. Next we have... This is CrossGen. This is Brath. Gorgeous, great. It's got a, got a review on it, on the cover. On the back, uh, Dragonlance Chronicles. Available 2003. Uh, artwork's pretty good so far. It's got some gladiator stuff going on. Rome, ancient Rome, and really, really good, colorful artwork. I'm really liking this so far. I, I might have to start reading this one. Wow, th this is really good. I'm gonna set this one aside. Because I really do love historical period pieces like this. And I like how it's framed, you know, with the Roman imagery and stuff. Very good. There's mosaics. Lady Death and Sojourn. Space Ace, I remember that. Gosh, some of the stuff I haven't seen in ages. That was pretty good. I'll take. Let's see. This is Action Lab Prince Less. Or Prince X. Prince Less. Yeah, um, I think I've seen this one before. Soft spots available at Toys R Us. Not anymore. Okay. Mm. I would say this is post twenty sixteen. Just a wild guess there. When we get the um, let's see. This is 2014, I stand corrected. Kind of looks like Mulan. I 
a lot like Mulan. The artwork's okay, but it's, it's if you can compare it to what we've seen in this video, and you do see a decline. You see a little bit less attention to art and story and more attention to other things. Like... Yeah, probably of all of these, it's not bad, but still kind of the weakest that we've looked at. And once again, so short. For a cover price of $3.99, you're getting very little story. Next is Zendra. Um, on the back, there's a Victorian ant, so I already know this is probably going to be good. I've been really happy with this company. Uh, it opens with some fold out artwork and then we have on this nice matte finish paper and once again we're back to you know really good artwork And it looks like really creative stories. Yeah, this is pretty stunning. I mean, this is good. Not bad. Let's see. Get some coffee. Next we have one I've never heard of. Terry Moore Motor Girl. Uh, three ninety nine cover put out by Abstract Studio. On the back we have an ad for Strangers in Paradise, which looks interesting. This looks interesting. She's wearing a marine uniform. Don't shoot at them, you fool! You'll just make them mad. It opens up with a really interesting cover. Demands your attention, but it is unfortunately a coloring book. <laughs> That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's got some good graphic violence. Some of this bad dialogue. It's not bad. It's pen and ink, apparently. It's not bad, actually. It's kind of good art. I like that effect. So, you know, like she's waking up and she's seen it fade in. All in all, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's still different and interesting. Um, there's a 25th anniversary sketchbook that. Yeah, interesting. Okay, next we have Awake by Action Lab. Did we already see this one? This looks very familiar. And we have already seen this one. So, 
Next is Silverhawks, an Odie by Star Comics under Marvel. It was a dollar cover price, so this is back when I was a kid. On the back, we got Care Bear, no, Popples. Um, Fruity Pebbles. This is 1987. When I was a kid, got the old bubblegum ads. Um, tang. <laughs> Do they still make tang? I used to really like drinking it. It made kind of a sediment on the bottom, but I used to, you know, think about the astronauts. Just like the real thing on the small. Oh, I struggled building these old model kits, especially painting them. Here's all the popular people of the 80s, the Archies, the Chickmunks, um, uh, Alf, Foofer, One to Grow On, the Smurfs, Fraggle Rock, Gummy Bears. Secrets of Baseball. Robotech. This might be more like 80. Heathcliff. Um, this may be before 87. Bullwinkle and Rocky. M&M's. Next, I'm um, happy to say, is a Suicide Squad. Uh, my, my first Suicide Squad comic. Um... Kind of excited. I've never. This is the first Suicide com, comic, Suicide Squad comic I've ever had. I see Katana, Killer Croc, Harley Quinn, Rick Flag, and Boomerang on the cover. So I'm kind of pumped about this. This is the return of Rick Flag. There's Killer Croc, Katana. Um, I guess that's Harley, Rick Flag, Boomerang. Amanda Waller. Looks pretty good, pretty good art, pretty good action. I might have to read this one. I'm, I am a, I like Suicide Squad because they're kind of, they're the underdogs in more ways than one. They're not just the underdogs in the comic book universe, they're also the um, underdogs in the movie that didn't do well, and the reboot that's probably not going to do well, the Birds of Prey that did terrible, you know, you gotta love the underdog, what can you say? Plus it's DC, and it's the underdog within the underdog. Because DC is definitely the underdog right now. With only Joker and your first Wonder Woman. There's good movies under their belt. And um, and I guess the Snyder Cut was okay. Um, Marvel is still on top with all of their great shows. Like WandaVision. And I just finished um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Which was absolutely great. I loved it. And I'm looking forward to Loki. Another great Fantastic Four. So I've got two Fantastic Fours and one Thing comic from back in the day in my collection now. Those stupid things that I remember as a kid. Sell greeting cards or something like that and get junk. All you'd have to sell so many to get anything off that that wasn't garbage, but it was all garbage anyway. They used to warn people, the kids, not to partake of these things, these scams, but they would always fill them up in comic books. The other big scam was selling big packs of 
army men that turned out to be just the most awful things. Uh, Two-dimensional, stamped out. Um, the nom, the way it was. Oh, boy. And D&D. &D. And I think that's about all I can do for today. That's 45 minutes of comic books. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there was a lot of comics in this one. And we only got one double, which is good for these. There was a lot of interesting ones. A lot of good art to look at. This was just a great video because you got a good wide um, range of different styles, different eras, characters, attitudes. I mean, just really, really, I have to admit, I really think this one was a good one. So, I'm going to call this video finished. Until next time, bye.